Hello guys, Salai Andalus here. On this tutorial we will see how to create this type of effect. It's a character interacting with the ground. I get this character from Mixamo. It's free, so you can download anyone there, but maybe you have a production asset. And we will see exactly to do this kind of like interaction with sand, snow, and how it emits only on contact. This tutorial consists of three videos. The first one, this one, we will see how to prepare the scene in 3ds Max, how to do the character low res to send it to Storm. The second video will be in a Storm, how to simulate this effect in a Storm using the granular solver system in a Storm, how to set up the deflectors, some considerations with the SDF, and finally on the third video we will import back the simulation from a Storm to 3ds Max and how to mesh it and the different systems that we have. So let's start. So let's see how we will do that. I import everything on my scene. If I play, you see this character moving across the floor. We want that this will be sun. So while it's moving across the floor, it will throw a lot of sun and interact with it. This model comes from Mixamo, but let's suppose that can come from Mixamo or it's a production asset. I high press it a lot to showcase how I prepare the mesh. When we send this to Storm, you can send this if you want, but it's always best if you prepare it in some way. Right now we can see that are multiple objects, and a Storm will accept that, but it's better if it's one single object that it's deforming, then the SDF will be only calculated once instead of calculate individual SDF for each object. To do that, what we will do is to take all our objects, do right click, do let's copy them okay and now i will send this to another layer this will be low res i will take my original mesh let's isolate that it has a turbo smooth i will be able to take out the turbo smooth but let's imagine that it comes like that as an asset because maybe you have an asset that doesn't have a turbo smooth it's simply a very high res we convert it to edit poly and let's start attaching all the rest of the elements um, I don't care about IDs right now, I only want to... I have the eyes here, so now everything is one single mesh. And now we have this very high res. Something really important to do is to know if this geometry is close. If it's not close, you will have a problem when you import it into a Storm, because a Storm converts any deflector into an SDF. Most uh, softwares do that when we deal with, um, with collisions. So you want that the object is totally close. And to know if this is close or not, the best thing is to add an STL check and let's press check. It will do an analysis of the mesh because it's quite high res, it will take a little bit. And this is checking if we have something close or there is vertex one over the other. So it found quite a lot of errors. Um, normally you will kick back this or you can fix it and we will do a quick fix right now. You will add a cap holes. Cap holes will do things like that. It's not the cleanest thing ever, but it's good enough. Um, depending where this is happening, maybe you would like it to clean it manually, but for what we need that it's mostly the interaction with the feet and the hands, this is good enough. Then. We want this to be as optimized as possible. You can send this as right now uh, to a storm, but it's always a good idea to keep it as low res because when we export this with LMB will be faster, the file will be smaller. It's always good to, to have it as, as clean as possible. 20% it, we have enough details and let's convert it to edit poly. But doing so, we lost totally the animation. What we can do is to check our original animation, that it's original mesh. Here it is. We can add a skin grab and point to this origin mesh. So our object will retain uh, something that we can do before doing that. Let's remove it for a while is that my origin mesh, it has a turbo smooth, let's turn it off. Will be way faster if we do it with without the turbo smooth, there is way less polygons. So 
it's done. Hide the original mesh and let's see if our, our low res is falling as it should. And you can see it's quite good. And right now we have something way, way much more low res. So way easier to work with that. So what I did here is that I add a ground. You need that the object interpenetrates a little with the ground to have some interaction. Uh, don't have the object floating on sitting totally on top of the ground. I have a little of noise, so we have more detail. And check, always remember to know in I am working in 30 frames per second. It's important when you go to a storm to know this, so it totally match. And we would like to fill now this with particles, but you don't want to fill all these objects with particles, so we will simply create particles around where we really need it. And to do that, we need to know this object where it goes. Because it's moving, it's a little difficult now if we start drawing a spline where it will go. Another trick for you guys is that you can select this object, go to Tools, Snapshot, let's do a range, we can do a mesh, doesn't matter so much. Uh, I will create, let me first create a new layer that will be called a snapshot. This is only for us, for what we will do next. I think it's a neat tr trick. Snapshot, range, 0, 90, copies with 20, it's enough. Mesh, okay. So what it does is analyze all the animation and create a snapshot. So we know exactly the contact points of this object. We will be able to do it kind of procedurally, but because it's kind of an easy task to do, I will do a simple spline. You will like that this goes a little over the action, so it's not totally tight. Doesn't need to be perfect at all. Here we have it. Make sure that on the areas that we want it, for example, there, I don't want to miss uh, this interaction there. So we can refine this. I, I want to make sure that we will have particles there, so it will collide and do cool stuff. So that looks good. Let's do an extrusion. Doesn't need to be totally tight. Let's go on the left view and see how much it interpenetrates. You want more or less to catch this detail. As more deep you do it, you don't want to do it totally deep because you will have more particles and more time simulating. Doesn't matter if there is some stuff going down. I think that something like that will be cool. With a Procutter, I like to do stock outside, a stock inside, auto extract, export by elements. Important on advanced options is to do no white removal. And finally, I would like to do pick a stock object. So this should keep these two objects. Another way, instead of doing that, you can use our tools, Razor. Razor can do this in two clicks instead of like 10 clicks. But right now we have our deflector and the remainder. This we, will, we want to convert it into particles. So that's cool. Let's export all the data for a storm. Snapshot, we don't need it anymore. Uh, this went into snapshot. Let's remove it here to have it clean. Snapshot off. First, we need our low res object. That is this origin mesh. And let's export it to storm. Because it's deforming, anything deforming or moving needs to be as an alembic. So file, export, export selected. And I will save it here. Character. And remember to choose alembic. 
we want to save our timeline that it's 90 frames. Ogawa is good, and let's do that. Now we need to export our deflector that is a ground, that is a static. File, export, export selected. You are able to export it as an Alembic 2, but because it's not deforming, I will use OBJ. This will be ground remainder. Save. The faults are good. Okay, done. And now we need to save the sun or what will be the sun. File, export, export selected. And this will be sun emitter. And all good, done. So now it's time to go to Storm. 